and there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels, and prevailed not. Like the beast, it goes by many names. Diabolus in music, which translates to the devil in music, being one of them. As its Latin Monica suggests, it is an evil sounding combination of notes that is designed to create a chilling and foreboding atmosphere. But how true are these claims? Is it true that the devil's code exists and that when you play it, it summons the devil himself? Or is it just a myth that someone coined? Well, there is only one way to find out. Join me as we take this bone chilling journey to unravel the history of the most sinister god in the known history of mankind. God help us. Now we are told that the interval was given a sinister name since its listeners originally found it unpleasant and surprising. Please, if you are of the faint heart, do not worry. We are just want to reveal and explore and find out if indeed the devil's God does exist. Before the Triton became a common tool in rock, listeners expected artists to play chords and patterns that were pleasing to the ear. When a tone wasn't mellifluous, such as the triad, it was inserted into a musical passage. It was unsettling since it didn't conform to the listener's expectation. Everyone knows the sounds of Halloween. Okay, not everyone of course. Welcome once again. So now let us look at how the devil's chord or devil's interval looks like or feels like on guitar. As we said earlier, it is made of three whole steps. So if we take the key of G, we have G, Re, Mi, Do, Do, Re, Mi, So we have G octave and another G here. If we flat the fifth, You can see the flat and fifth. Now, if you play the three notes, you can hear how they sound sad and cold. So, that is the devil's chord or the devil's interval. That's just an example of that. The devil's chord, how it sounds like. Let us leave it there because this is not a tutorial to teach you on how to play the devil's chord. Let us continue with our story. From creaky floorboards, howling winds, the amplified sound of a beating heart. Those are the sounds of Halloween. But back in the day, the devil was said to exist in a particular musical tone. For centuries, it was called the devil's interval. In musical theory, it is called the triton because it's made up of three whole steps, as we saw earlier in our video. Gerald Marshall, the professor of music at Trinity College in Hartford, Con says that the reason as to why it's unsettling is that it's ambiguous and it's unresolved. It wants to go somewhere. It wants to settle either here or there. You don't know where it will go, but it can't stop where it is. Okay, okay I hope you understood that because for me, I'm even more confused. We are told that there used to be rules against writing music that contained this interval. Marshall says that during the Renaissance, all music had one purpose, to be faithful and express 
the majesty of God. Anything otherwise was seriously avoided. But one music, once music was no longer shackled to the church, it was free to express all kinds of tension. And in this scenario, the devil's interval was ideal for that. From classical to jazz to rock and even Broadway musicals, the Triton conveys feelings ranging from forbidden love and longing to fear and defiance. Some of the songs known to have used it include The Tristan and I Sold by Richard Wagner, Walking by Miles Davis, even flow by Pearl Jump, just to name a few. If you are interested, you may go and check them out. Now, John Slobada, a professor of music psychology at London's Guildhall School of Music and Drama, explained to NPR in 2012 that the dissonant intervals of the devil's triton are particularly affecting because of the listener's instinct to find a resolution in music. Remember we say the chord doesn't have a resolution or is not resolved. And this is augmented by the fact that we are used to getting a resolution when listening to music. Now medieval musicians and theorists understood harmony in music as being in an allegorical relationship with the divine. Given the fact that a chord is normally composed of three notes, the pleasant sound produced by it was taught as a symbolic representation of the unity and trinity of God. Now three different notes producing a single chord in perfect harmony. But what if one of those three notes were not harmonic? That's the diabolus in musical right there, the devil's chord. Legend goes that in the Middle Ages, singing or playing the devil's interval in church was banned. Some say that in some churches it was so serious that even those who attempted to do so were sentenced to death. Wait a minute. Yeah, you had me right. They were sentenced to death. The Roman Catholic Church in particular is said to be one of those churches that were really strict on that matter. However, it is important at this time to note that there are many conspiracy theories about this code. Some people claim that there is no evidence that this interval was actually banned. These people argue that it's only because it was very hard and difficult to sing and also not pleasant to the ear that it was avoided. Again, some say that there is no real history of a case where somebody played the chord and summoned the devil himself. Well, what do you think? What's your opinion on this? As usual, leave your comments below. Now we are told that the earliest source that we have where the phrase Diabolus in musica is mentioned comes from 400 years after the medieval practice. And this piece it's found in the 18th century Rotopoint textbook called Gradus ad Panasson by Johann Fox. Now the actual phrase was technical and read Mi contra fa est diabolus en musica. This translates to mean that Mi, the third note of the scale, against which is the fourth note of the scale is the devil's chord now if you are not a musician maybe here you may find it difficult to understand but don't worry you will find it in the next few minutes however 
this isn't even the right interval e against f forms a minor second not a to write on the to write on can also be affirming and soulful blues exploit the sound of the tension of the unresolved triton is an intrinsic sound of the music now blues chord progressions are built on dominant seventh chords which contain a triton between the third degree and the lower seventh degree which never gets resolved in the same way that it does in classical tonal harmony now if you are not a musician again apologies but you will find the concept in the next few minutes now the culture of focal of the blues can't really get away from the devilness though like the classic story of robert johnson meeting with the devil at the crossfire to sell his soul in exchange for the ability to play guitar we are also told of another story of an 18th century composer and violinist giuseppe cartini who wrote a piece of music known as the devil's trill sonata a piece of music after he had a dream where he said his where he said he sold his soul to the devil and this is what he wrote one night in the year 1713 i dreamt i had made a pact with the devil for my soul felt enraptured transported and enchanted my breath failed me and i awoke i immediately grasped my violin in order to retain in part at least the impression of my dream but in vain this is just a hint of the history of the devil's interval some of the examples that we have but there is so much more left to be explained or explored about it well what do you think about the devil's triad